Yes, I'm going to paint half of this box in 24 hours. Let's be honest, if this box goes into storage or the closet, it's probably never going to get painted. So I think this challenge is exactly what I need to get this pile of plastic, at least in a state where it's somewhat decently painted. Let's see if this plan is achievable. Hi, my name is Toby and this is Paint Quest. Okay, I've spent the last couple of days just planning this. I've set everything up here in my living room and hopefully this will also result in a really nice time lapse in addition to all the painted models. This is the clock counting up and yes, let's start. All right, so I removed the mold lines from the first gun and that took me about 12 minutes. I have 480 minutes, uh, that's eight hours, means I'm going to remove the mold lines from 40 models, it's not enough. I still have to glue this thing, put it on a base, base this, and I actually also wanted to prime the models today. Okay, <laughs> I, have to, I have to get faster. Let's talk more work. Okay, while I start cleaning up the models, let me introduce you to my game plan for this massive undertaking. I'll split the 24 hours in three phases of eight hours each. My expectations for the first phase are building up all the models and basing them. Should there be spare time left, I'll prime the miniatures as well. But I have the feeling it's going to be close, so it might not come to that. Phase 2 will include batch painting all the base colors on the carapace and the body of the miniatures. If there's spare time left, I'll dry brush the base as well and get that sorted out. That should already give a nice feeling of accomplishment, having paint on all the models. Phase 3 will be for details and highlights on all the parts of the miniatures and maybe some extra time for the character models, which will basically lead the army. I have split these sessions over 3 days due to personal scheduling and 3 days will be at least fast enough for my first Warmer 40,000 game next week. So there's no rush to crank this through in one go. Also it's probably better for my mental health, getting enough sleep and maintaining a healthy relationship with the hobby in general. If I can pull this off it might also serve as a really nice blueprint for you to lay out a big project or start with a box like this. Three days with eight hours each can be done over three weekends for example, allowing you enough time for family or other obligations alongside this hobby marathon. I enjoy watching these kind of time lapses and if you are still watching this video, chances are pretty high that you appreciate them too. Two videos that inspired me to try this are Gooba Town's 24 hour challenge, where Brand builds and paints a start collecting box of orcs, and also Mini Quest 64's 24 hour challenge, where Sergei paints up the Skaven box. Both videos are excellent and I'll put links to them in the description of the video below. Check them out after you have finished watching this one. You might be wondering how I base the miniatures. When I was planning the mega project, I searched for Coral SDL files that I could use for basing. Nothing screams alien infested landscape more than colorful corals. My friend Sergei from MiniQuest 64 was kind enough to 3D print a large number of them for this massive undertaking, because I don't own a 3D printer myself. I want to make the most of the texture already provided with the base, so instead of gluing sand all over the base and covering it up, I'll glue some of the alien plants onto it and add just a few grains of sand here and there, representing larger rocks on the ground. To finish up the base, I'll blend the glued bits with the texture already given on the plastic base with Armageddon dust. Okay, end of phase one, eight hours. I did manage to build everything and actually base everything. I actually also wanted to prime those, but yeah, in the last, I don't know, 20 minutes, I think it's not possible, but I'm yeah, going to do that in the next phase. So I'm super happy. I'm super happy. I'm completely exhausted, can't think straight, but I did manage to build everything and also to include nice basing here. So I'm happy. It's the beginning of the second day 
Again, for today, eight hours. The second phase is going to be laying all uh, the base colors on the miniatures. First of all, we're going to prime these miniatures with an airbrush. Could also be done with a rattle can. I'm going to do this because it's currently quite rainy and thunderstormy here in Germany. Concerning the paint scheme and everything I have planned, I'm going to hand that over to Toby in the future, which is going to explain what's the plan here, how the color scheme is going to look like, and take it away, Toby. Yes, thanks Toby from the past, that's exactly what I'll do. As mentioned before, I prime the miniatures black. I use the black primer for better paint adhesion of the next layers and to create dark shadows in the deepest recesses. Oh, and a big oops during priming, I accidentally spilled the cup from the airbrush and it took me about 15 to 20 minutes to clean up the mess. This incident serves as a reminder of why using a rattle can can sometimes be a more convenient option. So we are 2 hours and 26 minutes in, all the miniatures finally got primed, no other accidents. Yeah, I hope the next layer is going to be way uh, faster uh, when everything gets a zenith with Vallejo buff, a little bit more than a zenith, so we do need to cover pretty much everything except these really interior crevices, all these turrets have from below. The next layer is just going to be like around one hour. But, uh, yeah, let's see how far we come. I want to have at least four hours left for brushwork today, so I better get started. I'm already exhausted. <laughs> okay. The first miniatures are already dry and ready for the second color, which is Vallejo Buff. This creamy color will be perfect to start the color scheme I'll explain later. If you want to replicate this without an airbrush, you can use, for example, Citadel Screaming Skull as a rattle cam. I wanted a paint scheme that can be achieved without an airbrush. I'll use mostly contrast paints, but in a very different way than you might actually think. Okay, so most of the models are, by most, all of them. <laughs> God, I can't think. Okay, I'm pretty much, uh, my, my brain is fried from all the airbrushing, and probably all the, the, the fumes. Okay, so um, all of them now have the undercoating I want, so it's a really smooth Vallejo buff application. It was a nightmare to put that through the airbrush, so one big lesson learned is to buy an airbrush specific paint bottle, so it's already in the correct consistency. The airbrush was always clogged due to having too much or too little thinner, so it took me quite a long time. I think I lost at least an hour there. And it, I'm also shocked that it took so long to get every miniature a decent smooth coat of this off-white. Took me some time, now everything is covered. I have three hours left, we are five hours in. The clock unfortunately stopped running. I uh, have to see if I can get it running when I come back because I'm going for lunch, coming back and then I have three hours left for probably one color on all of the miniatures. Let's see. After cleaning up the equipment, it's time to bring out the wet palette. But before we dive into that, the airbrushing process took me about 5 hours, which is a lot and way too much, but the smooth transition from the dark creamy to the bright was definitely worth some extra time. This serves as an excellent base for the upcoming steps we'll be taking. I'll be applying a series of glazes, layering them on top of each other to create a smooth transition between the creamy base and the colors. It'll look great and different than the usual paint schemes for Tyranids, which often have a hard transition between the body and the carapace. Let's start with the body and apply a general wash of Druki Violet. This should be a very thin wash with a mixture of 30% wash, 30% medium and 40% water. This will create depth and give the skin a basic tint that we can later build upon. The carapace will receive its first glaze using Griff Charger Grey. The beauty of this paint scheme is that it already looks fine and battle ready for the tabletop after the first three layers. A little bit light for my taste, but it's usable. We can add more highlights to the skin and apply a thin coat of Doomfire Magenta as a glaze on the top half of the limbs. This will give more color to the skin and add further contrast. As long as we have time, we'll continue to add layers. 
we will revisit the miniatures and apply additional glazes on top of this color base. The next one will be Black Legion on the Carapace and this will create more contrast and darken the armor significantly. By the way, you might be wondering how the miniatures stick to the homemade paint handles I'm using. I magnetized all the bases a week before the project. This makes handling the miniatures much easier. It's pretty much the first thing I do when I start a project. It helps with painting and it's super convenient for transporting the models later on. And this is the result of today's work. I'm really pleased with the color transition from the dark red to the creamy white skin color, but there's still a lot more work to do to complete the color scheme. More on that in the next phase. Okay, so the last phase of this project. I'm super excited how much I'm going to get done today. A little change of plans from the very beginning of the video where I explained all the phases what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to paint all of them of course, but I'm going to focus on the Combat Patrol, which is a subset of these miniatures, because I need the Combat Patrol for the first Warhammer 40,000 game I'm going to play in a couple of days. So I'm going to focus on this big bug over here, the Van Ryan Leapers, the Alpha Warrior. I'm trying to get those guns done over here, which is only seven more models, and then those four barb guns. And I think I should fairly quickly get them on the same standard as the already painted guns, which are looking fine, I think. And then when these are done, I'm going to focus on the other models and then more highlights on top before I paint the bases. Let's go! In the days and weeks following the completion of the miniatures, I can always revisit them and add more highlights to the character models or even the base troops like these Toma guns. Today my first task is to finish the Toma gun unit, however once that's done, I revisit all of them and give the somewhat dull looking flash guns a touch of color. I'm a bit afraid of spending too much time on this step, but I believe it's worth it. I'll glaze the Imperial Fist yellow on the upper left corner and the tip of the guns. Then I'll come back with Doomfire Magenta and apply a glaze to the smaller portion of these areas. The result will be a fiery red color gradient making the weapons much more interesting. We'll use this effect on the other miniatures as well, so stay tuned to see the final outcome. By the way, do you have any good suggestions for a name for this swarm scheme? Maybe Swarm Fleet Tobiathan? No, that'll be ridiculous. Maybe you have a decent idea? Let me know in the comments. Let's pause for a moment to truly appreciate these incredible models. They have quickly become my absolute favorites from the box. Whenever I gaze upon them, I can't help but to imagine a playful, flippery sound they might make. Even though they may not excel in the actual game, I can't resist the idea of adding more to my collection. Just envision a tabletop filled with a swarm of these delightful little dolphin dudes. It would be a sight to behold. The termagants are done and it feels awesome. Now it's time to move on to the next big unit I need to paint, which are the barbgons. I'll follow the same process as with the other miniatures. First, a simple base wash then followed by applying Griff Charger Grey on the armor. The most time-consuming step is the glazing of the Doomfire Magenta on the limbs and the other body parts. But this gradient effect will make the miniatures truly stand out on the tabletop, so it's definitely worth it. One trick I use is to apply more contrast paint on the top, for example, the big gun here, and then use a damp brush to feather the color out and creating a nice and smooth gradient. This technique works particularly well on the organic bodies of the Tyranids. The last step involves using Black Legion on the Carapace to darken the armor and applying yellow on the special parts of the miniatures, such as the space slug up here. I will then revisit it with magenta to make it pop even more. It's a good practice to write down all the steps and recipes for the color scheme before starting a project like this. This was really helpful, especially when working under time pressure to avoid forgetting any steps while batch painting. If you think I've earned a thumbs up, it would be great if you could show your support by giving it a like. This will let me and YouTube know that you enjoyed the content and would like to see more. Time is running out, which means it's time to paint the bases. 
For this, I'll once again use contrast paints. First, I'll apply a basic tint using Skeleton Horde on all the miniatures' bases. I focus on the sandy parts, where I would imagine it to be more in a brown or darkish tone. To make the bases more visually appealing, I'll add light splashes of Eldari Emerald as well, but this paint is very potent, so it needs to be diluted and feathered out with plenty of water to achieve the desired effect. After finishing the bases, it's time to paint the base rims with Abaddon Black. What's happening? Why am I still working on the model even though the time is up? Well, I'm currently giving the bases another thin coat of black paint for a smoother finish and I borrowed a bit of time from the first day where I ended with a buffer of about 50 minutes of the day left. Before we proceed to admire the fully painted army, let's take a moment to appreciate the hyper time lapse of the entire project. And wow, what an incredible three-day journey it has been. I've gained valuable insights from this experience, including the importance of painting efficiently, focusing on key aspects and embracing imperfection as part of the process. Would I recommend this approach? Absolutely. Setting realistic goals, planning every step and dividing the project into manageable segments, as I have done, works and doesn't burn you out. When engaging in batch painting on such a large scale, preparation is crucial. It's important to paint a few test models, compare color choices and assess the speed at which you can actually do the work. This will help you find the perfect mix and achieve the desired results. These three models here were the test subjects for the paint scheme I was targeting. And let's compare them to the entire Combat Patrol. And here we are, the entire army painted up and ready to feast on the galaxy. I will finish the models to perfection in the next days and post pictures of them on Instagram. So if you're interested, a link to my Instagram page is in the section below. You might be curious about what will happen next with the remaining miniatures in that box. I initially thought about selling them, but no, 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 they will all be converted into something special. More information will be available soon on this channel. If you enjoyed this video, I have more fun stuff on this channel right here. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.